Hey friends, welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. My name's Alicia and today we're gonna be making a super fun fall project. Now you've probably seen us make these on the channel, but we haven't done anything that is layered or I would say this big. So I'm gonna be taking you all through the process of creating this design right here using a standard Explore or Maker Series. This is, I would technically consider this a larger than matte project. So we're gonna be splitting the design up and then we are going to apply it to this mat. We're gonna be using some different paints. I'm gonna show you all the specific types of paints that we love to use and all the things like that. So if you are ready to get started, let's go ahead and jump into the craft. So as you can see with this design, we did the pumpkin in white and then we have the leaf in green and then we have this overlay of the pretty intricate like filigree and i'm going to show you all how to customize your design so that you all can sell these mats and i want to preface this by saying these can be very time consuming but in order for you to make a profit off of something like this you're going to need to make them in bulk and i say that as in like making three or four at one time doing all the steps together so like when you put on this back white layer, do all of them at the same time and then let it dry and then go back in and do this top filigree layer at the same time. And so that's gonna help you really, when you're making things like this in bulk, in between each mat, you're gonna get a little bit more dry time. So instead of just making one, waiting on it to dry, and then putting on the black part, you can be making multiples at one time and that's gonna increase your profit. So these sell on Etsy, you can go on Etsy right now and look, they sell for like 45 to $50 typically and they're totally custom. The customizable part is really what sells this because people love having a monogram or a last name or something along those lines, especially for home decor. So the mat that we're using today is actually from Home Depot and I think I paid around $9 for this. Now you can get them at Walmart for around five or $6. They're exactly the same y'all. So get them wherever you can get them cheapest. Hobby Lobby also sells these and they are on sale every other week I do believe. Um, but this is just like a standard 18 by 30 core mat that we've got here. You're gonna need some freezer paper. This is our favorite thing when we are making these mats. This freezer paper is plastic coated, meaning when I apply heat to this, it's going to tack down to our mat. It works so much better than vinyl, y'all. Using vinyl is a nightmare in my opinion whenever it comes to making these mats. This freezer paper is the ticket. It really, really helps with applying the paint and all of that. It tacks down really well when you apply heat to it. So I'm gonna show you all how to use this. We're gonna be using a 24 inch light grip mat. I've got black flex seal. Now, if you've seen any, any of our other videos, we use flex seal a lot. I love the black flex seal because it's so pigmented and flex seal is a liquid rubber sealant coating. So basically this is waterproof. So making these mats waterproof is very important in terms of longevity and durability, especially because they're gonna be outside. So flex seal is always a good bet but they don't always have the colors that I need. So these paints over here are what we use to paint the white and green portions of our pumpkin. So these are just the bare satin finish colors. This one is in Vine Leaf. It is the interior exterior paint and primer by Bear. And then this one is in White Veil. Something else that I love when I'm making these mats is using a stippling brush to apply my paint. Now. Lots of people have different methods on what they prefer. I love the stippling brushes for this, mainly because I can really get down deep into the core mat because it's very textured and I wanna be able to kind of poke all that paint down inside there. So I will typically use this. Now, when you're picking out paint colors, if you've already got some on hand, the key is to use something that is not a chalky finish. So we wanna kinda have a paint that has a latex finish. So we have lots of chalk paint, and in my brain, I'm like, technically, I could use a chalk paint to paint on this outdoor mat. It's gonna show up, 
but is it gonna be waterproof and it's gonna be durable? It's going outside, so you need to consider things like that whenever you're painting these mats. Um, what I would recommend if you wanna use paint that you've already got on hand is to purchase the clear flex seal and you can seal the entire painting in once you get done painting with the chalk paint or like if you've got a more matte finished paint, it's not gonna be as much of a latex based paint. So. I really love these bare interior exterior paints for this project because I know that they're gonna be durable and they're made for outside, if that makes sense. But if you don't have it on hand, you can always grab that clear flex seal, spray it on there and you should be good to go. So as you can see, we are on the Makers Gonna Learn website. Now, if you are brand new here and you're like, what's the Makers Gonna Learn website? We are a subscription-based crafting community and we offer you all thousands of cut files, thousands of fonts for you to use commercially for your projects, which is really nice, especially if you're planning to sell something like this. When you become a member, you get access to all of these files as well as that commercial license, which is really amazing because y'all know purchasing files with a commercial license can be very expensive. So what's really nice is that you can use any of these freely after you become a member. Now, I've just searched for pumpkins and we're gonna be using this filigree pumpkin today. I love this image. We're just gonna be downloading it straight from the website. It'll pop into a zip folder. You can double click that zip folder and then you can see right here, we've got the SVG, which is our cut file. So now we're just gonna to need to go to Design Space and then we're gonna to go to Upload upload image and then we're just going to go back to our finder or go to your downloads even your recent sometimes it can be your image can be pulled into there so i'm just going to click drag and drop we're going to upload here select the image and add it to our canvas now this comes in about 10 inches tall. What we need to do is get the correct sizing. So we're using an 18 by 30 mat. What I like to do is go in my basic shapes. We're just working with a basic rectangle today. So I'm gonna select that square, unlock my shape, and make it as big as my mat. This is gonna give us a really good idea of how big we need our pumpkin to be. Okay, so we've got our mat. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to brown. This is just for design purposes. It helps me get a good visual. And then I'm going to select my pumpkin. Let's bring it to the front. And then we are going to resize it. So now this is how it came in. You can see it's a little bit too small. Now, if you wanted to do something smaller, you could always pop it down there in the corner, which would be very cute. But I'm gonna show you all how to make designs this big with your Explore or Maker Series Cricut. Okay, so this is gonna be the black portion of our design. This is what we're gonna use the black flex seal for. It's our top layer. What I want to do next is duplicate this. Okay, we're just duplicating our pumpkin. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm pulling it over here so you all can see what I'm doing. I'm going to select contour. Okay, I'm gonna hide all contours. You can see back here behind my contour that everything turns black. Now, we want most of it to be black, but these holes right here in between the vines, I do not want to be filled in. The leaf needs to stay filled in because we're gonna be painting that green and this is all going to be white today. And then I'm just going to X off. So this is what you're left with. I'm gonna change it to white just so you all can get a visual of what we're kind of working around here. So I'm gonna send it backwards and y'all can see this lines up perfectly behind our little pumpkin, okay? So now we've got three elements. We have our mat, we've got our pumpkin outline, and then we have our pumpkin silhouette here. Now, obviously you can see over here in the layers panel, I'm getting all these little red exclamation points. It's like, no, no, that's not gonna fit. Like none of that's gonna work. So what I recommend is slicing these images in half. I'm gonna show you all how to do that. So you can see, we'll start with our little silhouette here. 
This image is 17.72 by 16.74. So what I'm gonna do is create a square that is half of that size. So if it's 17.72, I'm just gonna go get a shape over here, just a square, okay? I am going to unlock it. I'm gonna keep the height the same as the pumpkin. So our pumpkin is 16.736. Is 16 and our width needs to be half of what it was before. So it was 17.2. I'm gonna make this 18.86. That is gonna give us exactly half. Now, you're probably like, well, where do you line it up? What I like to do is make sure the top and the bottom of the pumpkin are covered, okay? And this side comes up a little bit higher, so I'm just gonna line it up over here. You see the vine comes up a little bit higher. Make sure that's covered. I'm gonna select both of the layers, go to align, and align to the right, okay? So just make sure that that square is completely aligned all the way to the right side of the pumpkin. And then we're gonna select both layers. Okay, we're selecting the outline as well as the rectangle and we're gonna hit slice. You can delete that, delete that. And all you need are these two layers. It's as easy as that, y'all. So I'm gonna show you again. We're gonna do the same thing with this pumpkin right here. But before we do that, I need to make a circle for my monogram. So I don't wanna split this up yet. What I wanna do is go ahead and make sure that my monogram is filled in pro proportionally. So I'm going to go to my basic shapes, add a circle, and you can just measure this by bringing it over in front of the pumpkin. I'm gonna change the color just so y'all can see better. And we're just gonna size this baby up. You can see, you don't have to bring it all the way to the edges, just close enough, okay? That's perfect. And then you can go ahead and work on filling in your monogram. I'm just gonna pull in a text box. Okay, we're gonna use an S for this project. And then we're gonna go to our fonts. Now we're using a Maker's Gonna Learn font today. This one is called Mystical. I love this font. I think it's so pretty. And I really, really want this letter to touch all the way across. Now, if you don't like that and you want it to sit in the middle, that's totally fine. But I want mine to touch the edge to the edge so it looks like a part of this swirly filigree moment that we're having i like it to kind of flow better that way so just size it up exactly how you want it bring it down here to your circle i want a little bit more leeway around my letter so i'm going to stretch the circle just a bit okay just a little bit and then we can actually select the circle as well as the monogram, go to combine and exclude. And it just slices that little S out for us. So we're getting there. We've got all of our little layers. Um, now we need to go back and slice this pumpkin in half, okay? We're gonna repeat the same process that we did over here with our white pumpkin. So I need to grab a square we're going to click it over here, unlock it. The height can be that 16.76 again. And the width is gonna be 8.86 again, cause it's the same size as our other pumpkin. And then we are going to select, make sure that the vine is covered. I'm gonna select both of these, go to align and align right, okay. And I wanna show y'all something. I put it up a little bit too high. Do you see where that bottom of that pumpkin right there? Let me change this color so you can see better. See where the bottom of the pumpkin is still kind of showing? I want this to go all the way top to bottom. So I'm just gonna bump that rectangle down a hair. Okay, just select it, use your arrow keys to bump it down. Okay, and that covers 
the top as well as the bottom. I'm going to select them both and make sure they're aligned because I was kind of moving them around. I'm going to align them to right again. And now that they're both selected, we're going to go ahead, select slice, and then delete all of these extra layers. And look, we've got two halves here. We've got our letter, and then we've got our other two halves here. Beautiful, right? Okay, so now that we have all of our elements cut, the only thing that we're getting the warning sign on is that core mat, which we don't need because it was just for our design purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. I'm gonna save my project just because we put a lot of work into this design. And if I wanna recreate these quickly, I wanna save this design in here. That way the only thing I have to do is change the monogram. So we're just gonna call this pumpkin doormat monogram. Okay, and then hit save. And now we're just gonna need to go to make it. We are using the Explore 3 today. We are cutting on a mat. It's gonna be a 12 by 24 inch light grip mat. Go ahead and hit okay. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is cut out our silhouette. So I've got my light grip mat here. I have some freezer paper. This needs to be at least 17 inches because our pumpkin comes down to the 17 inch mark. Okay, this is bigger than the mat, which is fine because we're gonna trim it. But I am gonna line it up over here to the far side. And then I'm just gonna use a brayer to make sure everything is down. Now you do wanna make sure that waxy plastic side is down, which is a little bit more shiny. You all can see it's picking up the light a little bit more. That side needs to be facing down onto the mat and then the, the more matte side needs to be looking up at you. So what I like to do to cut off this excess is just fold it up and then crease it along the edge line of our mat and then trim it off. I'm just using a true control knife here. And we're gonna do that all the way around. Okay, back in Design Space, we're gonna go ahead and select Continue. So when we go to Browse All Materials, if you're using an Explore series, you're gonna need to type in parchment paper. If you're using a Maker series, you're gonna have the option to do freezer paper. They cut very similarly. Um, parchment paper setting works just fine for our Explore users. And then I'm gonna hit Done. We're just gonna be using a fine point blade today, and we can go ahead and load our map. Okay, now, this is gonna work as a stencil, so you don't wanna remove the excess around it. We actually wanna remove the silhouette of the pumpkin from our paper. So you can see here, I'm just gonna pull this up very gently, okay, because this is our stencil. So I'm just gonna be removing all of this. We need the negative space. We're just gonna slowly remove this. Okay, so this is the portion we wanna keep. I'm gonna flip this over and kinda of go with gravity to remove this from the mat. This is why you wanna use a light grip mat for this project. And then we've gotta cut the other side of our pumpkin. I'm gonna cut this the same way, parchment paper. Okay. 
Okay, so for this one, we're gonna be doing the same exact thing. I just want you all to be prepared that we are gonna need to weed this one a little bit differently. Um, so let's go ahead, get our freezer paper on our mat and I'll show you all how I keep up with all of these parts. Now for this one, we need all of the outlines to be painted on. So I'm gonna be removing the outlines very carefully. There's lots of little inside pieces that we need. We do not want to lose those, okay? So be very careful. If any of them snag, just grab your true control knife and kind of loosen them from the mat. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna cut the other half yet because I'm just gonna leave all this on here. What we're gonna do is go ahead and start the painting process. That way it can kind of be drying and stuff. I don't wanna pull all these pieces off because it starts to get confusing. It's like a puzzle. So I'm gonna save the other half until after we get to the point where we can actually transfer these onto our mat. So what we're gonna do next is go ahead, pull our mat up here and we're gonna start painting. I'm gonna be using a Cricut Mini Easy Press to apply my parchment paper to my mat. I'm just gonna put it on the highest heat setting. And we're just gonna start with one side. So I'm gonna set these pieces over here, just to the side for a minute. Now, I like to find the middle of my mat before I iron this down. So let's go ahead and measure that. And you can mark it with some painter's tape. So this is a 30 inch mat, so we need to be marking about at 15 inches. And you can even mark exactly at that 15 inch mark. And then what I'm gonna do is line up this edge of my pumpkin to that mark. And in order to make this straight, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm gonna measure this and mark my 15 inch mark at the bottom as well. If you have any excess on the bottom of your butcher's paper, just trim it off just so it's kind of out of the way. You don't wanna to trim too close to your design though because we are gonna be painting. This is a technically a stencil. So you don't wanna, you want to have a little bit of room to go over the edges a little bit. But I'm just gonna be lining up the middle of our mat with the this inner line right here on our pumpkin. So what I like to do is go ahead and get that ironed down and that gives us a little bit more stability in our stencil. I like to kind of press down on the sections until they adhere. I find just running over it like quickly doesn't work as good. So I'm pressing for about 10 seconds on each little section. The key is to kind of stay around the edge of the stencil to make sure that everything is really adhered down. That way no paint is seeping underneath our stencil. So for the underneath layer, technically these vine, this vine portion right here is not even gonna be painted for this area. Um, it, we just cut it out for the stencil, but really we're just gonna be painting the stem and then the main portion of the pumpkin. So I've just got my paint and then our stippling brush, and I'm just going to be pouring this all over and then kind of smudging it out. That's the best way that I've found to make this work. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of that paint out. Now, obviously you don't want too much because we don't want it to seep under our stencil, but I'm just gonna pour and kind of pour it around. Just don't get too close to the edges. You do use a lot of paint here. The sample sizes that I had did work for one, like if I did one pumpkin, it was one sample size of that paint. I almost went exactly through the entire thing. But I like to just spread this around. 
And you can use spray paints for this as well if you find that that's easier. This just really saturates it. Obviously, we're having to use a ton of paint. Um, so just do whatever is gonna work best for you. I really like the full coverage look, personally. Um, but spray paint would work good. You may just have to do a couple layers. You can see what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, how it will take a long time to dry because we are using so much paint. So that's why I say making these in bulk is really gonna give you the most profit because you can be working on other ones while the other ones are drying. And you gotta think, I like to have good coverage, but this is more of a rustic style design. So if you're not getting every single nook and cranny on here, it just adds character to it. And also we have to think that our black outlines are gonna be going over a lot of this. So it's gonna look good, even if it's not completely solid white and just mostly white. Now that you've got that portion done, you can go ahead and remove this. Just be very careful if you've got paint on other sections of the paper. Now I'm gonna dry this with just a heat gun and we'll lay down the other half of our pumpkin and repeat the same process. Now this one will be a little bit easier to line up. I'm just kind of laying it. You can see right underneath here is the edge of our first pumpkin. I'm just lining up this inner edge with the edge of what we just painted. I'm actually just going to tape this down and then we will iron down the rest of it. This is just to give it a little bit more security. And I'm going to trim off this excess. Now for this left side, we do need part of the vine section. We are gonna be painting our leaf on. So I'm gonna make sure that this leaf portion is very much ironed on. That way, whenever we go to paint the green, we have a good outline and stencil to follow. So I'm gonna start with our pumpkin color and then we'll do the leaf afterwards. The reason I chose to use regular paint is because I wanted a customized color. Now, like I was just saying, you can use spray paint for these. You're not gonna have to use as much paint. The selection on spray paint is just not as much as I want. Um, and also, I just find that that bare exterior paint works really well. Um, but if you've got spray paint and the colors that you would like to use for this project, go ahead and use those just so you don't feel like, you know, you're having to use a ton of paint. So I feel like whenever I'm pouring that out, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, everybody's going to be like, ah, she's using so much paint. And I am, I am using a lot, but I just want it to be full coverage. So it's totally personal preference. Also, when you get up to the top here, make sure you're not going into the leaf. So you can see it comes right here. I'm just gonna stop like right underneath there, okay? Remember, we'll have the black lines going around it, so it doesn't need to be like a perfect line or anything like that. I'm just kind of bringing it up close to the leaf and we can touch up anything if we need to. Want to make sure where these lines meet that it's very covered because our monogram is going to be going there. So we want it to be very full coverage and look super clean. We don't want it to look like there's two different pieces, if that makes sense. You've also got to think if you all make something this, if you all make something like this, you can always do a much smaller one just in the corner of the mat and it's not going to take nearly as much time but it's still going to be custom and still look really good so the bigger ones obviously should have a 
larger price point because they're going to take much longer to complete. Um, but you can still sell these and do just a smaller version of what we're doing here today. You won't have to worry about slicing the image in half. You can just do it as a smaller one in the corner. You can also do it without the pumpkin color in the background. So you could do just the outline with the monogram. And I think that would still be really, really cute. So now I'm just going to grab our green and another stippling brush and we are going to fill in this other section where the leaf is. I'm bringing it up pretty close to that stem because the stem will be black so it's going to cover this bottom portion of the leaf anyways. You won't be able to see it. Now we can remove all of this and see where we need it to touch up. Now you've got to think the right side has already started drying, so it looks very different. Um, but once it dries, it won't be as different. So what I'm going to do is just take some of this paint and go along this seam line to kind of seal it all together. And then I'm just going to hit this with the heat gun to dry it a little bit faster. If it's a sunny day, you can always pop this out in the sun and it'll dry it pretty quickly as well. The heat gun works just as fine. I'll say too that this needs to be completely dry before we go in and add our outline layer on top of it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is remove the bulk of the pumpkin first. So I'm just gonna slowly remove this. Be very careful on these little pieces right here. I'm just going to keep all this on here, set it to the side for a second, and then we are going to do our best and line this up. So I'm kind of lining it up down here at the bottom edge and then trying to kind of iron it out. I like to use tape to kind of secure it and then go in and iron it all down. So I like to get this inner edge kind of set where I need it and then let everything else kind of fall into place. Once you start working on this, you'll get a feel for it more. It's kind of hard to <laughs> explain, but once you're doing it, it'll make a lot more sense. So I'm just kind of ironing it down. You can see like the paper doesn't want to lay flat. So you kind of have to get a feel for your stencil and just take your time and get it lined up perfectly or as perfect as you can. It's not going to be exactly perfect. That's fine. We're just going to get it as close as we possibly can. So once you have the bulk of it down, we can go ahead and start putting our little pieces on there. And I just like to take some reverse tweezers or just regular tweezers, and I will take each individual piece off and start placing it. So I'm going to start from the top and kind of work my way down. And then I'm just going to do a few and then iron them down as I go. It may also help you all to refer back to your design in Design Space, or if you're working on this outside, take a picture of it on your phone, and then you can just refer back to the photo to see where everything needs to be placed.
Okay, now that all of our pieces are ironed on, the best way to make sure that everything is staying where it's gonna go is to kind of fan over top of it, or you can even blow air to see if any of the pieces are gonna come up, because we really do not want these moving, and we are gonna be using the Flex Seal spray paint on this portion, and so that's just gonna cause a lot of air. Not only do you wanna make sure that they're secured down, but we need to cover this half. So I'm just gonna use some butcher's paper. You could use like Walmart bags or any type of extra plastic you've got laying around. We just wanna make sure to cover this left side. Make sure that you shake this up really well and that you are spraying this in a very well ventilated area. I also like to do a test spray on something other than the mat before I go to make sure it's gonna be spraying out directly. And then you can just do light spritzes. And I try to come in from the top to prevent anything from going under the stencil. Okay, and then I typically do one, sometimes it needs two coats, but usually one does it, and you can remove it while it is still wet. Just make sure that you're not dripping any paint on to anything else, and then we can hit it with the heat gun to dry it, and we'll move on to the other side. I like to use my reverse tweezers to take up all of these pieces. Okay, it's looking really good, y'all. So we obviously need to cut out the rest. I'm gonna cut out the other side on the parchment paper setting, as well as our monogram. And then we will go ahead and lay those. And I will just do the same thing on this side that we did for the black outline. We're gonna do the same process. And then I'm gonna walk you all through how to do the letter. It's very similar. I'm just gonna walk you all through it. So you've got a step-by-step. -step. Now you can see that this did not line up perfectly and that is totally on me. And listen, it's gonna happen a little bit. What I would recommend is touching it up with a paintbrush. Um, so you can take some of this Flex Seal and just spray it out on like a paper plate and then dip into that with your paintbrush, which is what I'm going to do. Um, but I don't wanna do too much correcting if it's off a little bit, it's okay. It's a doormat. I mean, no one's gonna be staring and making sure everything is perfectly lined up. It still looks beautiful in my opinion. Um, but if you wanna touch up some of those areas, you totally can do that. So for this one, we are going to weed the letter out and then we're gonna weed out everything around the circle. So we wanna keep the circle. And then just carefully remove this and we are gonna place it on our mat.
and then just cover the area and then we're going to add the black spray paint. And then once you've got it completely covered, you can go ahead and remove the stencil very carefully. This flex seal does not like to come off of your hands. So if you need to wear gloves, do that as well as an apron. And look, we are completely done. You just need to let it dry and it's good to go. This turned out so pretty, y'all. I love it. So as you all can see, if you've made it to this part of the video, it's a little bit more time consuming to create these. And that's why we say, make them in bulk, and y'all, you're gonna end up with a super high quality product that people are going to love. I mean, look at the finished product here. These are absolutely gorgeous. Like I was saying earlier, if this is just way too big and you feel like oh, it's too much, think about doing maybe just a corner piece. You don't even have to do the white and the green in the background. You could just do the black outline and it's still gonna be just as beautiful and sellable. If you all like the files that we use today and you loved our tutorial and you want to become a member, make sure to click the link in the description and you can join our crafty community. We would love to have you as a part of the Makers Gonna Learn team. So we will see you all in the next video. Bye.